Hi, welcome to the second domain of CCSK. Hope you had a chance to review my previous video of domain one. So this domain is going to focus purely on governance and enterprise risk management, which is a very broad topic. Um, this becomes more complex, uh, especially when uh, uh, we are discussing the cloud because the governance starts from the organization policies, standards and procedures. And this is the highly impacted area in cloud infrastructure, especially. So this, um, Enterprise risk and governance uh, hierarchy uh, that starts from uh, the governance. So basically, uh, four areas in terms of uh, the cybersecurity, there are four areas which are highly impacted um, in uh, governance and risk management. First is the governance. Uh, this includes the policies, um, processes, and internal controls that comprises how an organization is run. Everything from the structure and policies to the leadership and the other mechanisms for the management. Uh, e ERM, um, it is, um, uh, we will discuss here in terms of the information risk management and information security. Although e ERM is a broader topic which includes um, the other topics as part of the organization in terms of the risk along with the information risk management. So this includes the, the managing overall risk of the organization aligned to the organization's governance and risk tolerance. So ERM includes all areas of risk, not merely those concerned with the technology. As I said, this is not just the areas, there are other areas as well as part of uh, the ERM. Information uh, risk management, uh, this covers um, uh, the managing the risk related to the information, including information technology. Um, this has all sort of risks from financial to, um, to the physical and information is the only one of the multiple asset uh, in an organization need to manage. And last one is the information security. Um, this is uh, basically is the tool and practice to manage risk uh, related to the information, um, um, how to how to protect and uh, if the information uh, is leaked out, then what uh, you know uh, what kind of risks could be to the organization. So all that sort of uh, risks that are covered as part of the information security. So as part of the governance, we have, um, you know, um, as I mentioned uh, earlier that the governance is the highly affected um, area in the cloud computing because the primary issues here is that uh, any organization can never outsource or can never transfer the responsibility for uh, the governance, even when you are using the external provider. So we will talk about here the, uh, you know, um, the contract, uh, the cloud supplier assessment and compliance reporting. Uh, when it comes to the contract, the cloud computing changes the responsibilities and the mechanisms for uh, implementing and uh, managing the governance. Um, the responsibilities and mechanisms for the governance are defined in the contract. Um, it is really very vital that we discuss uh, any contract thoroughly with the cloud provider before we agree to outsource anything. Uh, because the contract is the only guarantee of any level of service or the commitment, assuming there is no breach of the contract. Um, if there is any breach of the contract, then of course that tosses everything into the legal scenario. And the contracts are uh, the primary tool to extend the governance into the business partners and, uh, and the providers. So it is, it is really important to, uh, to you know, uh, fetch all kind of information from the cloud provider and uh, review them and discuss um, and, uh, you know, to frame them in, in terms of uh, the contract. Because, for example, if, if you have anything uh, related to the cybersecurity compliance, then we will have to first review um, the requirements and then those has to be there in the contract. Let's say if we talk about uh, uh, the data which cannot uh, leave the country, uh, this is the sensitive data and uh, in order to comply with a particular regulation or any compliance, uh, we will uh, keep the data, we will need to keep the data within the country. So this has to be captured uh, within the contract. 
supplier assessment this is uh, this is the area and this assessment um, is supposed to be performed by the potential cloud customer using the available information and the allowed processes or the techniques so collect all the information from the cloud supplier to perform uh, the assessment this includes the contractual information, uh, the manual research um, with the third party attestation, of course, and the technical researches, um, what uh, this cloud provider can provide and what kind of controls they have, what kind of design and security they have in terms of the, the cloud implementation and feature offering. Um, do they have a third party attestation? and uh, the feedback from the peers and so on. So a lot of um, assessment, supplier assessment need to be performed as, as part of um, this activity. And uh, also, as we discussed in the previous domain, we have a CSA star registry, um, you know, which is an assurance program and um, the documentation registry for the cloud provider assessment based on the uh, CSA um, uh, cloud control metrics and the CAIQ consensus assessment initiative questionnaire. Um, the compliance reporting it is um, the this includes the documentation on uh, the providers internal and external compliance assessment. So um, we need to check whether the uh, whether they meet the compliances uh, for the different regulations. Do they have any kind of uh, audit reports? Are these audit reports are internal or um, did they perform any kind of uh, you know, third party audit or third party attestation as well to, uh, to comply with those regulations or the, um, the, um, uh, the rules? Um, so uh, we need to take care of the contract, supplier assessment, compliance reporting, uh, all three things um, while you know uh, taking care of the governance um, as part of uh, you know uh, this domain of course uh, during during uh, you know exchange of those information for example if we are trying to review the compliance uh, reporting then uh, they might not share uh, those reports with you as it is Pro you probably need to sign the nda um, unless you have already signed the contract with the, with the supplier Enterprise risk management, um, we have shared responsibilities, so the different service models, contracts and the documentation. So ERM, as we discussed, uh, this ERM is the overall management of the risk for, uh, for any organization. But just like the governance, ERM is, is, using the, is also using the contracts to define roles and responsibilities. As with governance, you can never outsource your overall, overall responsibility and uh, the accountability for risk management to any external uh, provider. You have to own that responsibility. Uh, you are the overall, uh, overall, you know, uh, responsible uh, organization uh, because you are holding uh, your end customers' data. You are providing the services uh, to your end customers. The risk management, um, you know, in, in cloud is based on uh, the share, shared responsibilities uh, model. Um, this accepts uh, the, the some responsibilities for certain risks, of course, and uh, the cloud customer is responsible for anything beyond that. Uh, similarly, in the service model, the provider um, always manages more risks in, in SaaS, while in, uh, in infrastructure as a service, in IaaS, um, the consumer uh, is responsible for the more risks because uh, they are developing the platform, they are developing the services on top of the infrastructure as a services, um, you know, um, uh, platform. So in IAS, the customer owns the more responsibilities. In SaaS model, the provider owns the more responsibilities. ERM uh, also, you know, uh, as as with governance, ERM also uh, relies on the contracts and the documentation uh, to know where the division of the responsibilities are and the potential for untreated risk lies. Whereas the governance is, is you know, nearly exclusive based on the contracts. The risk management can zoom into the technologies and the processes um, of the providers and of course based on the documentation. 
for example um, uh, the contract will will rarely define how network security is actually implemented uh, review of any providers documentation will provide much more information to help with any effective risk decision and one more as aspect to it is uh, there is no guarantee that the contract can be effectively uh, negotiated but even if you are not able to uh, negotiate the contract it doesn't mean that you cannot go with that contract uh, with that provider you can still go with that uh, provider but you need to understand that um, if you did not uh, you know if you could not um, uh, negotiate the contract with that cloud provider then we need to assess uh, the open risks uh, and we need to plan the mitigation uh, for those open risks to uh, you know to uh, bring them in the range of acceptable risk so acceptable risk when it comes to the acceptable risk it means uh, the risk tolerance where you know um, the every organization uh, has their own risk tolerance and this has to be decided by the leadership team and uh, the stakeholders of the organization which they are supposed to accept if we have any open risk in that it varies based on the asset uh, kind of asset that we are trying to protect or you know we have a risk in that area and um, we should not make you the blank uh, you know make a blanket risk decision um, about any particular provider rather the the assessment should align uh, with the value and the requirement of uh, that asset involved <clears throat> and overall this this assessment helps to accept or avoid that residual risk e effects of uh, the service models so uh, in terms of the governance and uh, and um, the risk assessment so as we discussed um, the if if uh, it comes to the infrastructure as a service the cloud uh, customer owns the overall responsibility because cloud provider offers you only the um, the resources lying in their data center rest everything else uh, even the the os platform you have to make sure that it is hardened uh, you know everything on top of that the application security data security everything you need to uh, uh, take care and um, you know that is customers responsibility similarly in case of saas uh, software as a service major uh, majority of the uh, you know the risks um, uh, that falls in, you know uh, in the court of uh, cloud provider so they are going to uh, uh, to take care of those it is um, in case of pass when it comes to the you know uh, contract negotiation this is the likelihood of uh, of fully negotiated contract is likely lower here um, than the other two like saas and ias uh, because the core driver for uh, most uh, pass is to deliver a single capability with a very high efficiency but the customer uh, need to spend more time to identify whether uh, providing the level of control or support required to enable the governance or um, the risk management in terms of uh, the deployment models um, the the public cloud um, there is very lower chances of you know um, very lower ability of the um, the governance um, here uh, reduced ability of uh, contract negotiation because uh, it is the public cloud and most of the services are common for every customer they do not accept the customization when it comes to the public cloud uh, there are several services uh, which are part of the public cloud uh, in saas model you cannot uh, really negotiate you know the contract with uh, with the provider in such cases while in the private cloud it allows the customization easy negotiation and increased cost um here the benefit is that um, you can implement you can get um, your contract implemented but uh, you know with all customizations and uh, you can negotiate uh, you can add on whatever you want to in uh, in the contract but this increase the cost 
Similarly, in hybrid and community uh, cloud, it is a mixed environment. Uh, for example, some services are deployed on-prem and uh, some services are uh, deployed in the cloud. So it is a kind of uh, a mixed environment here. Cloud risk management trade-offs. Um, you have less physical control. You do not have access to the resources which are uh, lying in the cloud provider's data center. You don't have uh, really the physical control over them. Um, there is there is no reliance on the contract. Um, you know, uh, or we can say greater reliance in contracts because there is no other way you have to rely on the contract you have to rely on the audits and you have to rely on the assessments uh, that you need to perform um, increased requirements uh, this is for proactive management of the relationship and adherence to the contract which extends the uh, beyond the initial contract signing and audits um, the provider always, you know, um, constantly evolve their product and services to remain competitive and uh, these ongoing innovations might exceed uh, strain and not uh, not to be covered um, um, by existing agreement and the assessments. Also, this reduced need to manage the risk. We can say that uh, the cloud customer have uh, a reduced need. You don't need to uh, manage the risk, but at the same time, you need to remember that you cannot transfer uh, the ownership you are responsible for those risks. Uh, cloud risk management tool. Um, request for the documentation. Step number one. Uh, review their security programs, their future plans, um, what they what they have in place. Uh, for example, uh, you know, in terms of their future plans and uh, security programs and the documentation. Then review their uh, legal documentation. Um, you know, legal, regulatory, contractual and jurisdictional. Uh, requirements for both the provider and as a customer yourself so for legal we will uh, more talk about in in domain 3 uh, next is the evaluate uh, contracted services um, in the this is in the context of your information assets you need to evaluate those services um, perform um, separately evaluate the uh, overall provider such as uh, finance stability, reputation, and, and outsourcer. So this, these things you need to uh, take care of uh, during um, the, uh, the supplier uh, assessment. Thanks for watching. For next video, um, you can uh, subscribe. Uh, it will be coming up very shortly. Uh, the next video will be on domain three, legal issues, contracts, and uh, electronic discovery in the cloud. Thanks for watching. Thank you.